Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David Kim, and today we're going to go over a question on LeetCode. This is a medium level question, and it deals with st uh, string manipulation. And so you might see this uh, maybe come up on a phone interview uh, for yourself, or uh, maybe early on in the, like maybe one of the first questions on on site. Um, typically, string questions they come out on the, they come out as a phone interview question. And so um, let's go ahead and get to it. We're going to go over, uh, we're going to understand the question together. Uh, think of maybe a strategy to get through it. And then uh, I have the answer here for you, um, right over here. And we're going to just go ahead and read through my answer and kind of see how how that um, was a good answer or whatnot. And so this is this is a repeated DNA sequences. You could go ahead and read this if you want to pause the video. But basically what they want to do is they want to output is an array input is going to be a string and they want you to output rep repeated 10 long 10 letter long sequences and so we have five a's here and five c's here and we have uh, five a's here and five c's here and so because that was repeated this guy this guy gets in we have five c's here and five a's here and we have five c's here and five a's here because that was repeated this guy makes it into the output and that's pretty much what they want. Um, I can see that there is a lot of uh, opportunity for it to repeat itself more than once. Say, if we get like a twenty-letter long, um, twenty-letter long DNA sequence of just all A's, then it repeats itself so many times. Uh, of course, the A's are repeating itself. Um, if we look at it, if we divide that ten, uh, 20 20 length string in half, that's ten A's and ten A's. So you might think, okay, it repeated twice, but um, starting from index 1 to uh, 10, it repeated itself again, and so on and so forth. And so uh, because in that case, we don't want to uh, spam our output with a bunch of uh, 10A sequences, we want to use some sort of um, strategy that would allow us to kind of get rid of all of those. Um, also, what we want to do is kind of, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to walk through this string and kind of notice, okay, here's a 10 letter chunk, and is it repeated or not? Um, good way to do that, of course, using just for loop to go through the string, and we're gonna have to make note of what we've seen before and what we haven't. And so let's go ahead, and um, that's a high level idea of kind of what we wanna do. And so you might already think, okay, we already talked about we're gonna use a for loop to go through it, we're gonna need an output, but do we want to make that output what we wanna? what we actually put in there. Maybe not because when we see the 10 letter 10 letter A string and we see a 10 letter A string again, we don't want to put that in our output twice. We want to have some sort of data structure that won't allow duplicates. Uh, a set is very good for that. Plus a set has a good constant time lookup, which is good for that other data structure that we want, um, kind of seeing what we've seen before. And so that is a high level strategy about that. and. One thing that I do recommend is that when you're coming up with a strategy, um, think about it in terms of time and space complexity. If you're fussing over, should I use a for loop or a while loop? That doesn't matter as much. Um, I would say if you're optimizing, if you're gonna, if you're saying you're optimizing and thinking about that, you want to be thinking about time and space complexity. Any optimizations beyond time and space complexity, I would only say do it for maybe optimizing for. Uh, making the code cleaner using helper functions. Um, other than those three things, uh, there really isn't any need to optimize the function, especially since in an interview situation you have a give, you have a very tight time limit plus you're under stress. And so let's go ahead and look at this solution that I've written here. The input is s is a string. I think that's just what they gave me. Um, and this first one is like a base case. It uh, kind of rules out. Okay, if the string that they gave us to begin with, if that is less than 10 letters long, if yeah, if that's less than 10 letters long, well, there can never be a 10 letter long sequence that repeats itself just because the first first thing you get might be only a nine letter sequence and that can never repeat itself up to a 10. So we want to return a, an array that's just empty. Um, we don't have to set this to a variable yet because, um, yeah, simply we don't need to do that. Uh, it's a base case. We could return an empty array. That's fine as it is. So now if we are given an input that is less than uh, 10 letters long, we're good. Um, at this point, since you're thinking about kind of um, weird situations, uh, 
you might want to ask the interviewer or anybody, um, is it possible for there to be some weird inputs in here, like maybe numbers or whatnot, just because uh, it wouldn't matter too much in the scheme of things, but if you are um, just thinking about that stuff, they're probably going to say no, it's all going to be letters, but it's a good question to draw out there. It's going to take a second to answer anyways. Um, so we create two variables here, repeated DNA and all subs. As you can see down here, we return repeated DNA. And that is because of what we just talked about. If the if our original string of DNA strand or that strand DNA string was just all filled with the letter A, we don't want to repeat the 10 letter A's like 19 times or whatnot. And so because we don't want to do that, or it's never going to be 19 times, it's going to be like 10 times at the most. But we never we don't want to spam our output with that. We want to not have duplicates in there in and of itself. And so when we collect the repeated DNA, what we're going to do is we're going to put into a new set, which will, um, it still allows us to put in that sequence of A's over and over again, but it's not going to be really saved in there. It's only going to create, it's only going to hold unique values. And so later on, when we have a set of unique values, we could just use the spread operator to output that as a return um, array. Now all subs, we're also using a set, but this time we're using the fact that a set can, um, or we're using the set for the fact that it has constant time lookup. Um, because remember we said, okay, we're, as we go through the strings, we're going to create substrings, and we have to see, okay, have we seen this before? That's how we're going to know if we repeat it or not. And so if we've seen it before, um, you want to check against kind of everything we've seen before. And in that case, we don't want to have this in an array where uh, lookup's going to be, uh, what is that? Uh, big O of N, uh, worst case scenario. And so we want to have it a set, constant time lookup. It's going to make our function a lot faster. And um, yeah, that's the uh, reasoning behind that. We're using sets twice, both for different reasons. And so, you know, it's good to kind of know the power of sets. You know, it's very similar to a map, except map, uh, it has a constant time lookup. It has the whole unique thing, uh, unique uh, key at least, but we don't need a we don't need a payload, and so we're gonna choose a set over a map. And so let's go ahead and look at this next section. We're using a for loop to go through the string, and we're creating a substring here. So substring. Um, if we take this example, where the sub first substring we're gonna run into is this five a's and five c's, and we're gonna check okay all subs. Um, does it have that substring? And it doesn't, so we're gonna add it in there. We've seen that we've seen that sequence before. Um, it wasn't a repeated sequence as of now, but we're gonna keep it in our in our pocket because if it comes out again later, that means it repeated, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna at that point add it into our repeated DNA. And then here we're gonna go to look at all this and look at this. And let me go ahead and um, console log substring for us, and that way it can be a lot easier for us to kind of look at. So uh, given this uh, string, uh, the first substring is 5a's, 5c's, and then 4a's, 5c's, and 1a. And so it keeps on going through that, um, and even at that point, we haven't seen it uh, repeat. And so all of these, every single one of these guys is within, is getting put into our sub, all subs set. And so it's constantly coming into here, but we haven't triggered it until we come to this one. Oh gosh. Um, okay, so that's the beginning, and just a little bit down, we have this 5As and 5Cs. We've seen that before. That was the first substring we had. And so at this point, once substring is set to 5As, 5Cs, because of the second time we see it over here, um, we're going to say, okay, all subs, do, do you have 5As and 5Cs? And it'll say, yes, it does. So then we're going to add it into our repeated DNA. And... Um, tricky thing here is you might think okay then we're gonna have four A's five C's and one A and that's gonna also be put into there but um, actually this is six C's here so that's why it will never work like that you see four A's five C's and one A uh, here four A's and then we have six C's that that tricked me I literally had to redo this video because I was uh, I tricked myself into thinking wait how is this working? I think it's broken, but um, it has it has six C's. That's why the output only it only contains these two. 
But um, that pretty much explains the logic here. Pretty much as we go through, we're going to check OK. We're going to be putting every single substring into all subs, including even these little tiny ones. But um, simply because of this. And by the time we get here, though, it's never going to repeat. And so we don't need to worry about that. Um, yeah, even these uh, three T's, two T's, and one T, simply, simply because of the fact that we're cutting down versus going up, uh, that guarantees that we won't repeat the single letter. Anything be beyond the 10, we're never going to repeat it. And so once we do catch it, we're going to add it to repeated DNAs. But um, in the case that repeated DNAs have duplicate values of it in and of itself, uh, we're going to, we, um, we ensure against that by having put it into a set, which creates it as a unique, uh, unique set of items. And then we use the spread operator to return that. And so pretty much at this point, um, the only thing we have left to do is submit it and see kind of our score. Uh, time limit exceed. Oh, it's because we're cost logging this guy. Okay, cool. And so we are faster than 100%. And I always uh, think that it's good to look at the details. It takes you to this page over here, and you can see how you compare with other people. And so I am here. I am faster than this guy. That's great. Um, let's look at his strategy anyways. He, he is, okay, he's using the sets also. He's also using a current, uh, which he defined outside there. You don't have to uh, because you're never going to use it out of the scope. Uh, same thing, substring, and uh, once and result. So he's using the spread for the result. Same thing here, exact same thing. And the only reason why that I got a better score than he did is just because sometimes the machines are faster at some points. Um, it really does make a difference. Um, I would run a test at least three times if I wasn't getting a really good score just to see the average runtime that I get. And um, yeah, that's what I do. We can see here that he's using an object. So he's using a key and value pair. Um, I clicked on this guy, the first tall one. A lot of people are doing that. Um, he's using substring. OK, if I've seen it, result, true. Um, OK. And I believe he's, um, the reason why he's probably slower is because when he returns this, uh, this is the last bit of like a function call. And it'll probably have to go through that object entirely. Actually, it might be doing the same thing for the spread operator. I'm not 100% sure what it works on the back end there. Um, but yeah, the leak code has spoken. Sets are better. <laughs> and so yeah, I, uh, I encourage you guys to um, uh, try this on your own. If you haven't, um, turn off the video and go ahead and tackle it. I'll have this link in the, in the description below. And of course, if you are a different language than JavaScript, there are tons of solution here. Um, there's a Java solution, Python solution, bunch of other stuff, PHP, Swift. And so if you are even doing this and you get stuck and you don't want to, or actually if you're stuck here, you wouldn't, and if you've never submitted it, you would never, you wouldn't be able to go to the details page. So yeah, go to the, if you don't want to just Google this separately, go to, go over here. You can probably look at something like this and look at the strategy and uh, translate it to your language. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for um, checking out this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, Stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye.